Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over solving random business problems using command line tools. So in this video, we're gonna be combining find, grep, sed, tr, and sort to create a quick and dirty sitemap by looking at files in a directory. So at the very bottom here, this is the complete script that we're going to be building up in stages here and playing around on the command line to see how it all works. But yeah, let's start at the very top here with the business use case. And by the way, you know, chances are you won't have to solve this exact problem, but maybe it helps demonstrate how you can combine a few general tools to solve your specific problem here. But yeah, let's actually treat this one as a business use case. So in this case, the problem is you have an upcoming penetration test and the company doing the test is asking you for a list of URLs that your sites have because they don't have a crawling tool to get this list themselves. So they've requested the URLs in a new line separated text file, you know, something like this, right? Where the example.com would be your domain name and then you have some URLs that exist on there. And uh, let's just say in this specific case here, the web framework that we're using, CodeIgniter 3, which is uh, built on PHP here, uh, it doesn't actually create a site map by default and most of the URLs are behind a login page. And uh, you're also not the primary developer on the project, but you know there's probably going to be 100, maybe even 200 different URLs. So this isn't something you would wanna do really by hand. And maybe you don't wanna bug the dev team just yet here because they're working on other features, but you're probably gonna to wanna to coordinate with them later on once you've assembled the list URLs here, and maybe they can hand tune it based on experience here. So some questions you might wanna ask yourself here are like, well, how long is this going to take? How are you gonna approach this problem here? Does your answer change if you only have a couple of days to come up with a solution while juggling a whole bunch of different other tasks here too? So that led me to the first question I wanted to ask myself, which was to crawl or not to crawl. Uh, but given the time constraints here, I didn't want to investigate too many different crawling tools. That's actually one area of web development that I don't have a ton of experience with. Um, maybe I could have gotten away with using something like Scrappy or Scrapy here. You know, this is a Python based web crawler. It's a very popular one uh, that could have been maybe interesting to use perhaps next time here. But uh, the good news is, is here in our case, we didn't need a perfect solution. Uh, it's not important that we have a 100% accurate list of URLs here that exist within the site. Really, we're just going after the 80% here. For example, you know, if a controller has a bunch of different actions, which are URL endpoints here, we really only need to identify the index page because a pen tester can actually discover the rest of the URLs just by clicking around in some dashboard there to maybe find like an edit form or, you know, whatever happens to exist on that page there. We're also going to be giving them a live demo of the site beforehand, and that's an opportunity for us to call out the really most important areas that have the highest impact and important to us. So in my mind, I kind of classify this problem as a side quest, right? Is this something I can complete in less than an hour with a good enough accuracy here and move on? It turns out, yes, it was more like 15 or 20 minutes here using a couple of built-in Unix command line tools here. So the first thing I did here really was just looking for patterns here. And thankfully the application does have some structure to it. There's basically, there's this controllers directory with a bunch of different files there. Some of the files have uppercase characters, some of them don't. And then inside of those control files, there's a bunch of different functions here. And most of those functions end up being URL endpoints. Now, the good news is though, you know, going after that 80% here, uh, really just about every controller has an index page. So we don't need to actually look at the contents of the file itself here. Now, what I did notice though, were some of the files, uh, they probably weren't meant to be accessible URLs. Like for example, some of them started with test underscore. There were some error ones. You know, there was also some Ajax endpoints that, you know, the front end hits there and you wouldn't necessarily just make you know, random post requests on the back end to it. But again, if you're doing some pen testing stuff, that could be some good things to do here. So I chose not to ignore those. Uh, but what that probably means though, in the end here is we need a way to filter out some of these results. Now, before I wrote any code, I kind of just thought a little bit like, what would a high level solution look uh, like here? So, you know, I wrote out some not quite pseudo code, but maybe some of the steps or the strategy could be something like this, right? Get a list of file names in the controller's directory, remove the PHP file extension from the file name, convert all the file names into lowercase because all the URLs are lowercase there. And then I prefix the file name with the base URL. You know, this could be example.com, whatever it happens to be here. Uh, filter out the results that we don't want there. And then maybe sort the results alphabetically just because it makes it a little bit easier to, you know, see, see things at a glance here. And then finally, we would actually uh, write the results here to a file here. And with those steps in mind here, you can describe the above as a pipeline. And the command line is really good at providing tools to pipe together. And the ordering of steps two and five here, uh, they don't matter too much. I mean, the most efficient solution on paper would be to filter things out uh, before you do some excess processing, like converting things to lowercase. But depending on what tools you use or how you approach this problem here, you know, steps one through four here might actually just happen in one command. Really depends here. But in any case, you know, these are basically the steps that we need to perform. So let's now convert some of that here to code. Now, what I did here, and by the way, I should mention here in our case, you know, we have three different sites and we want to create three different text files. So there's going to be three URL files, one for each domain name basically here. And uh, yeah, each project has its own project directory on disk here. And uh, I figured, you know, maybe I can call the script like URLs, you know, 
my app or another app or, you know, basically site one, site two, and then site three here. And, uh, you know, it would look for this my app or another app on disk here based on whatever project directory you're in here. And then, uh, yeah, it can just dump out things like my app dash URLs that text file. And then, you know, that would be basically it. And, you know, some of the boil boilerplate to get that up and running here, you know, I've done all sorts of different uh, videos around basic shell scripting setup with like different options here. But yeah, basically what will happen here is, you know, we accept some input that's going to be the application name. Here's like our sites directory, wherever, you know, the project happens to be here. We're going to do a whole bunch of different commands here and then basically just echo out uh, the results of that to the file there. And that's basically it. So yeah, let's uh, see how some of this works here in the command line. Um, I actually have the final script, so I'm just going to make a new script here and we'll just call this one demo, something like that. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to pop this one in here. Cool. Actually, let me replace everything here. Yeah, there we go. And then, uh, yeah, we can probably just run the script here and then we can say something like my app and that is going to just dump out um, a URLs file that's going to be basically just the contents of placeholder here. So if we do that and we do my app URLs, then uh, yeah, we just get the placeholder here because again, we're going to be incrementally building this thing up in stages here. Cool. So let's go back to the blog post here and skim things around. Now, the first step here basically is just getting a list of file names here. Uh, the final script, you know, again, we're going to go over at the end here, but yeah, instead of duplicating things in each step, we're just going to build it up incrementally here. Also, I will mention this while working on the script, you know, I didn't really write the URLs out to begin with. Uh, I just output things to the screen so I can get some very quick feedback. So yeah, let's uh, see how some of this works here. So going back to the demo script. Yeah, I'm going to, you know, abort this idea of just echoing things out to a file and redirecting. Uh, we could just, you know, just run find here and just see the outputs there. And now the first thing we need to do though is, you know, figure out where our list of files are within the project. Now, the good news here is that, uh, you know, all the applications have the same directory structure. So we have like the source directory, then applications, and then all the controllers are there. So we can just use find here to be like, okay, cool. You know, here's a project path, which is really just like a sites directory. And I should mention here that, uh, you know, on disk, I throw up a little basic sites directory here. So if I go to you know, sites and then my app in here, you know, we have, uh, you know, there's the CD source and application and then controllers. And in this case, all I really did was just add a couple of, you know, dummy files here. There's not even any content in there, uh, but that's the directory structure that we're going to be working with. There is the other app, which I named like another app, and that's going to be very similar. I'm not going to bother looking at it right now, but I just wanted to call it out that, you know, these things do exist in this current directory here. So that's how we have site there. And then, uh, yeah, there's a controllers path. So we're just going to use find here on the project path, which is going to be this slash my app. And then, you know, the source application controllers here. And then, yeah, we just want to you know, make sure that we only get results back that are files. We don't really care about directories. And in this case, you know, it's not going to be recursive. So let's just limit this to uh, the current directory of, you know, the controllers directory there. And once we have all of that, you know, now we can run that and see how that works. So if we do my app now, in this case, you know, we see we do get the outputs of all of those different uh, files here. And uh, you can see that, you know, this one, maybe you want to fill this one out later. We're going to make this one lowercase and we're going to do all sorts of different things here. But we have step one, basically, which was getting a list of file names here. Now, let's say that we want to convert those file names into URLs. And I would say, you know, this is probably the most complicated part of the script because it's tying together quite a few different things in one shot here. But yeah, we'll cover the details uh, maybe after seeing the output. And again, you know, I'm going to modify the command so we can do some uh, real time checking this out here. But you know, this is basically what the output's going to look like. So let's modify our command to do that. Uh, in this case, we're just using exec there, which is, you know, um, an option available to find here. And we're just like launching a shell here. And then what are we doing? Well, okay, well, we are going to use printf here and just modify the output of this file. So we get the things that we want here. So in this case, you know, percent %s ends up being the file name. And this little guy in the end here, this is going to uh, make sure that we no longer get the file extension. So this is like some shell magic to just basically remove the .php here at the end here. And then we have to do some shenanigans here, which is kind of interesting where, you know, notice that this whole entire thing is wrapped in single quotes, but we have this app variable, which would be my app. And, uh, you know, if you wrap a variable in shell with single quotes, then it is not going to get interpolated. Instead, you're literally going to get like dollar sign open brace, you know, app close brace there. But in this case, you know, what we want to do is, uh, you know, close off that single quote and then start double quotes here. So this gets interpolated and then we're back to using single quotes over here. And uh, yeah, uh, that is just some nice shell features to get this type of behavior that we want where, you know, most of our string is in single quotes, but we have this one area that wants to get interpolated and then we're back to single quotes over here. And actually this part is kind of interesting at the end. I mean, you know, we don't need to go into gory gory details here, but there 
there is a Stack Overflow post. I'll link uh, a link. I'll leave a link to this one if you want to go and check it out. Um, but yeah, okay. So I think actually there's a better explanation here around some of the things here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess we covered basically all of it there. But yeah, this is definitely the most complicated parts. But the good news is, you know, now if we take a look at the script here and run it after I save it, then we are going to get a slightly different result here, which now is just going to include dot slash. And then, you know, we can see that everything is over here. But the good news is, you know, things are now prefixed with our URL. So you can imagine, you know, in this case with the pen test, well, in my case specifically here, you know, there is our domain name, but now we have the my app inserted there as a sub domain. And then, yeah, each application in this case had its own subdomain. So if I ran this with um, another argument here, like another app, then we're going to get slightly different output here, but we can see it's uh, it's on its own subdomain. So we're getting pretty close. That's pretty nice, but okay, let's go back to over here and, you know, see some of the easier steps that I would say here. Yeah, next up is just like filtering out unwanted files here. And in this case, you know, test underscore and errors and things like this, we can actually do a reverse match with grep here. So that's what the dash V is going to do. So it's going to return everything that doesn't match this pattern here. So yeah, let's just add that to the end of our command and see some of the output there. So then we can just pipe it into grep and then we'll see what happens. Uh, let's go back to the my app version of it. And in this case, yeah, we got rid of that errors one that was that was there. Or actually, no, that one was test underscore, right? So if I rerun it, we can see, you know, test underscore nope. But now that we run it with this filter here, then that is going to disappear, which is quite nice. Now, you know, in our case specifically, uh, I had more options here, but we're just doing a regex or expression here with a pipe operator in the middle. So each one of these is like if it matches this or this, and then you can add more like or that or that or the, or the other thing, right? It's up to you. You can just add as many as you want here. And uh, yeah, in this case, we're also, you know, potentially having an optional forward slash. So, you know, most of these paths here do have a slash here, um, even if this were trimmed out, which we're going to do in a second. Uh, but yeah, maybe you're matching a string that's not directly after the slash here. So the slash could be optional. So that's why I have that set up like this here. And that's basically what this part just, uh, you know, mentions over here. Now there is something interesting here. So the GNU version of find does add this dot slash. And I actually noticed when I ran this script on Mac OS, this was not here. Um, so it was interesting when I, when I just made the script here and checked it out with WSL within Linux, but that does mean we need to do one little modif modification here too, which would be, you know, now just piping this into said, and then said is going to do a find and replace here on that input. And now we can see that we actually still do have the dot slash here, which is interesting. Looks like maybe I messed up something here. Uh, what did I mess up? Mm, did I save the file? Yes, I did. And we are piping that into said. Okay, what did I miss? So we are doing a replace here on this dot slash to change it into nothing, but we're not getting that. Did I just forget to escape that? Nope, that didn't work either. What did I miss? Oh, uh-huh, yep, I need to actually escape the dot there, not escape that forward slash. Uh-huh, that's going to work. Yep, cool. Okay, so I just need to actually go back to the blog post there and make sure I escape this because this is going to be a regular expression here. And uh, yeah, we need, like literally we want to match on the dot. We don't want to just treat that as like, you know, uh, a regex dot. So cool. So we have this case here. So whether or not these dot slashes are going to exist, this is going to replace them to be nothing, which is exactly what we want here. Now we have this capability that is going to work with both versions of find the BSD version as well as the new version. So cool. We have that. And by the way, it is worth pointing out here too, that, you know, typically when you use said, you might use forward slashes as the uh, delimiter of set itself. But in this case, we're just using pipe symbols. It really could be anything. Uh, in this case, it just avoids us needing to escape the forward slash here because yeah, since we're using the pipe symbol there, then uh, the forward slash can just be taken as is here. And that's basically what that mentions here. Now, one other step here is we just need to convert the uppercase to lowercase. So TR has a nice, some nice built-in functionality to do that. So let's, uh, Add that here to our list of or piped of commands here, and then we can rerun the command here, and now we can see uh, everything is lowercase. So again, you know, just the before and after, comment that one out. You know, we can see that that hello there, there was an uppercase character, but now we're just converting all the uppercase characters to all the lowercase characters. Nice. So we're getting pretty close here. Uh, basically, we are done. I mean, the last thing we need to do, or technically optionally do, is just sort things alphabetically. So yeah, we can just pipe that into sort here, and in this case, it's already alphabet like. Uh, alphabetized or <laughs> it's already in alphabetical order. Um, but in this case, yeah, we can see that we see the C's before the H's. So that's basically it. And then, you know, the last step would be putting this into a variable like URLs and then just outputting it to the file, which we will see in a second here. You know, I didn't bother using sort dash U here for unique file names because, you know, the file names themselves are already unique here. And this is the final script here. In fact, I actually did have that one escape there. So it looks like uh, maybe I just need to modify, where was it? Yeah, this one over here. Okay, cool, easy enough. But yeah, in this case, uh, I'll actually just take this whole thing. We'll replace what we have here. And then we shall see it all work. And then, yeah, in this case, 
you know, it's just being saved into a variable and it just broke things up onto new lines just to make it a little bit easier to read here. But now if we run the demo my app and we'll do it again for another app as well, then, you know, if we start cutting out these files here, we'll see uh, we get all the um, URLs that we like. So if we go back to this one, yeah, we can see in this case, you know, the underscores, everything is lowercase, everything is nicely uh, sorted. Cool. So that is basically it. Yeah, it would be interesting to see some of the use cases that you've used these tools to solve some type of business problem. Because again, you know, these are things that I just see in my day to day, they come up and it's like, okay, cool, I can spend 20 minutes or whatever, come up with a, a solution that solves one of the problems here. But with that said, yeah, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know in the comments below, I'll do my best to answer all of them. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.